When the president isn't flying in Air Force One, he's usually getting around on the ground in one of his armored bulletproof limousines. It could survive driving through a war zone and has various capabilities that make it assassination proof. From smoke screens used to confuse attackers to what they might be keeping in the trunk, here are unbelievable secrets of the president's limo. Number 20. Blank Check Imagine your company having basically a blank check to create the most secure passenger vehicle on the face of the planet for one of the most influential people alive. It could take an immense amount of research, trial and error, and the intellectual know-how to put it all together. If something bad happens, the blood is ultimately on your hands. The government is willing to spend an unlimited amount of money on the proper vehicle to get the president around town. The company General Motors was given the contract for the new limo, receiving nearly $16 million for the work. What they've created is the most secure car in the world. Each model costs more than $1.5 million. Number 19. Dimensions Each model weighs 7 tons and measures about 18 feet or 6 meters in length. To put that into perspective, a normal limo weighs about 2 tons and might cost about $50,000. So you can tell this thing has made some upgrades in the armor category. The doors are rumored to be as heavy as doors found on airplanes and are impossible to open from the inside, making it essentially cut off from the outside world. The president can choose whether or not he wants to use tinted windows in case he needs some private time with the first lady. The interior seems pretty cozy and everything is on board for a fun road trip. Number 18. Five Layers of Glass Imagine windows being able to turn bullets that are aimed at the president from automatic rifles into dust. That's what the windows of the beast can do for its country. What can you do? The president's windows are comprised of five layers of glass and measure at a thickness of about five inches total. The glass is extremely heavy and requires multiple people at a time to install these things. The rear window is said to weigh at least 60 pounds on its own and can stop rounds from AK-47s, M16s, and battle-ready weapons. It turns bullets into dust by the time it reaches the second layer of glass. Between each layer of glass, there are slivers of polycarbonate, which is a very strong form of plastic. Number 17. Ballistics Testing in order to make sure the windows are bulletproof, various experiments are conducted which seem to show that the bullet will penetrate about the first layer of glass, but once it reaches the polycarbonate, a round from an AK-47 will basically disintegrate and a majority of the fragments will be trapped in the second layer of protection. Unbreakable windows will almost certainly help the president avoid a sticky situation, but they're not unbreakable. Number 16. 50 Shots the window can survive about 50 shots from the same rifle before it eventually breaks. That would require a gun that has a very high firing rate and an extremely accurate shooter who can hit a moving target. It seems very unlikely that this will ever happen. To top it off, they would also have to try to hit the president inside the limo and not the heavily armored frame of the car, but we'll get to more on that later. Number 15. Car Crash, Gerald Ford Imagine just driving along one day, doing your thing, and out of nowhere, the President of the United States crashes his limo into you. You better hope you got insurance. That was the case in October of 1975, when a man named James Salamites left home to pick up his brother from work while in Hartford, Connecticut. That kind of seems like a random city for the beast to be at the time. In any case, James crashed into him with his 1972 Buick LeSabre, and a strange spiral of misfortune seemed to happen afterwards. First, he was thoroughly interrogated, as if he did it on purpose, and ended up in the newspaper as some kind of maniac. Not too long after, he claims he was framed for drug possession, and his car was never repaired after being struck by the heavily armored limousine. Number 14. Taft's 1911 this photo we're taking a look at here is of President Taft's white streamer, which converted the stables into a garage. It's basically like the first presidential automobile, and we've come a long way since this point in history. It used a steam engine and was developed by the White Motor Company in 1911. He preferred a steam-powered car since it could help him escape in a hurry in case he was swarmed by the press or by photographers. It was quite a luxurious whip at the time and spent a total of $12,000 on four of these, or about $326,000 in today's time. Number 13. Kennedy's Limo Designers of today's presidential limos will certainly keep in mind the assassination of JFK, who was shot while in his limo in Dallas, Texas. In any case, his limo is a piece of U.S. history and was the most sophisticated presidential vehicle at that point in history. It was known as the X-100 Lincoln Continental. It included radio telephones, a fire extinguisher, flat-proof tires, heavy-duty air conditioning, and a siren. 
The fuel tank was protected by a, quote, porous foam matrix that kept gas from spilling everywhere in the case of an explosion or car crash. The car now sits at the Henry Ford Museum. Number 12. It carries blood. We've come a long way since JFK's limo, to the point where it's almost like an ambulance. Secret Service members are aware of what happened to JFK, but they'll do their best not to let that happen again. In the case of an injury, the president has a fridge full of his own blood, just in case. The Secret Service member may have to perform some impromptu surgery in case the president ends up springing a leak. Number 11. The Tires Tires are a crucial part of any car, and you won't be rolling into the White House garage without them. So as you can imagine, only the best of the best tires will do. Smart assassins would typically target the tires to be a weak point in any automobile, but the president has some special ones in the case of an ambush. The Beast is equipped with Kevlar reinforced Goodyear run flats, which essentially means that they can withstand bullets and spike strips. Number 10. Smoke Screen You ever talk to an ugly guy at the bar and wish you can just put up a smoke screen out of nowhere and make a daring escape? The president might need to make an escape in a hurry, and despite it being a V8, it's not necessarily the fastest car in the block. If it wants to pull off a magic trick of some sort, the smoke screen can be utilized to help them escape pursuers and reduce visibility for a short period of time. Number 9. Presidential Convoy Also known as a motorcade, the president rarely travels without his Secret Service goons nearby. In some cases, it might even include up to 20 to 30 vehicles like what we saw during Ronald Reagan's funeral. The convoy might include some other beasts, just in case, since there's a total of 12 of them, and this would throw off potential attackers. Even if you could get more than 50 shots into the window, you'd still have to deal with a ton of backup, and you better believe these bodyguards are heavily armed. Number 8. Body Armor The body armor on this car is made from military-grade alloys containing steel, aluminum, titanium, and ceramics, which cover the entire car. The armor on the doors can reach 8 inches in thickness and is capable of resisting landmines, bullets from automatic rifles, IUDs, and grenades. It's also airtight in order to ensure resistance from biological attacks, making it one heck of a zombie apocalypse vehicle. To top it off, the driver can administer an electrical shock to any unauthorized people trying to open the heavy door. Number 7. Oxygen Containers from our Air Force One video, we briefly mentioned some capabilities of the beast, and this commenter asked a good question. This is also a serious concern with the Secret Service, and to make sure no one passes out from deadly toxins within this airtight vehicle, oxygen tanks are fitted into the trunk in order to ensure healthy respiration. This is also installed, because you have to imagine a big steel box of a car would run out of oxygen at some point, right? It might seem like a little bit of a risk carrying all that oxygen on board, but the President will think it's worth it after taco night. Four months to make. Building a beast is a long, tiring, and somewhat classified process. It actually uses a chassis of a larger Cadillac like an Escalade. It's equipped with a V8 engine but can only reach a supposed max speed of 60 miles an hour. You have to sacrifice some speed for all that armor sometimes. General Motors doesn't want to give a ton of details for security reasons, but you have to imagine he's got some kind of nitro boost for emergency situations, right? Number 5. Production Facility the Texas Armory Corporation is a company that's likely paid by General Motors to produce the necessary armor and windows used on the Beast. They're located in San Antonio, Texas, and they were so confident with their product that they released a video of someone going into an armored car, which was then riddled with AK-47 bullets. The shots would have been fatal, and they were aimed directly at his head. So safe to say that it works, and they have confidence in their products. The current CEO of the company, Trent Kimball's father, was a government agent living in Latin America who noticed how many lives would have been saved if more armored cars were utilized. Number 4. Loaded into Air Force One You think the president is going to get a rental car for his next trip across the world? Think again. This photo here shows the bees getting loaded into Air Force One, which means his car goes wherever he goes. This allows the president to be totally armored without even leaving the plane. Number 3. Driver School Top-class drivers must be hired in order to even be considered to be the president's driver. It's a highly sought-after position, and not all resumes will be accepted. Do you think you can handle a 7-ton beast without any problems or experience? It's not always easy to parallel park something like this, and people have to go to driver school. The drivers go to a driver school in New York known as Tony Scotty's Vehicle Dynamic Institute in order to learn. Number 2. Rollovers are easy. 
you'd assume that with all that weight on the car, it could keep down the ground pretty easy. With more weight on the top of the vehicle, the center of gravity is positioned higher than normal. With an inexperienced driver, it could be fairly easy to tip over. Speed is less important than control for this vehicle. Number 1. What's hiding in the trunk? What could the president possibly be keeping in the trunk of his limousine, and is the oxygen tank really only there just in case of a biohazard attack? Some shady things are known to happen occasionally with governments who don't always agree with us, and the beast might get utilized from time to time, maybe to keep people quiet. It's also believed that extra firearms such as the P90, likely extra body armor, and rounds of ammunition are kept in the back. There's almost like a small armory in the trunk of the car, and a little extra room just in case someone needs to disappear. Now wasn't that a cool video guys? We know you liked it. Be sure to subscribe to American Eye for more videos just like this. We'll see you there.